I put this demonstration together to compare some of the watercolor pencils that can be found out on the open market. This demonstration compares 10 different brands. The pencils shown here cover some of the more popular brands and some of the lesser known ones, but it doesn't cover all of the brands. This comparison wasn't meant to disparage or promote one brand over the other, although I may utter some comments of praise or disappointment at some point along the way. Rather, I put this together so that it might help somebody else who is in the market for watercolor pencils make their own decision. Okay, first up here is the offering from Royal and Langnickel. This is actually the first watercolor pencil kit that I had purchased. I liked the idea of a travel case that I could take with me that contained everything I needed except the water so that I could park myself on a bench or under a tree somewhere and do some outdoor sketching. As seen in these images, it looked pretty inviting, showcasing some rich looking colors that can be used to create some beautiful pictures. On the inside of the case are eight watercolor pencils, one black, one white, and six colors. It's the selection of these colors that I base my comparisons on in this demo. Also included are an eraser, a paintbrush, a two-size pencil sharpener, and a six-page watercolor pad. I could not find a weight on the paper of the package. I never used the pad itself, and I had purchased a separate sketchbook of my own. I don't know why they included a two-size pencil sharpener for a single-size set of pencils, but it is a handy tool to have. Just to uh, jump ahead here uh, a little, <clears throat> while I'm on the topic of sharpening, uh, the first time I tried to sharpen these pencils, I was taken a little aback by how brittle some of the colors were, particularly the yellow and the brown. Uh, granted, these are hexagonal pencils, and they're a little harder to sharpen than the round pencils because they have edges. But every time that I had a decent tip that I thought I could work with, the pigment center would crack out and I just had to start again. And to add further insult, when applying pressure when drawing after the pencil was sharpened, the tip would just sometimes shatter. Sometimes a small chunk of the cracked pigment would just slide out of the wood. Anyway, and when I started to actually use the set to paint with, I realized a few things right off the bat. One, I was going to need more colors, although that's no fault of uh, um, Royal and Langnickel. Uh, two, after laying down the sketch and adding water with the supplied brush, I noticed that some of the hairs were shedding, like right away. In about 15 minutes time, the brush lost about four or five hairs. So I know it wasn't one of the best quality brushes I could probably have had. Three, I wasn't happy with how weak the pigment looked when attempting to create a wash. Um, and also, when attempting to mix two colors together, Everything looked just weak. Uh, there was no pigment um, being drawn out of, of what was put down um, when I activated the colors. Um, here you can see I put a line down and I'm trying to illustrate how well the colors would bleed into that um, area of, of dampness, although I probably added a little bit too much water. Here you can see for yourself just how weak the pigment release really is from these pencils. I'm repeating my efforts in hopes of getting more color out of them, but it's really not working. Overall, for the 20 bucks that I spent on this kit, I was disappointed in the quality of both the brush and the pencils. And while the case and other accessories are still useful, the brush and pencil issue uh, is pretty big. So, while the uh, package looks attractive on the store shelf, um, it fails to really deliver what, uh, what it shows, uh, and that's a disappointment. Um, so, I wouldn't recommend this as a gift for anyone, uh, especially a child or a beginner. Um, if these are the results that they think that they should be expecting, then I think their frustration level um, would discourage them from trying watercoloring again in the future. But if um, Royal and Langnickel could improve their quality on their uh, products, I think they have a good idea, because I don't see too many um, water pencil sets out there that include everything um, that they include in this case. Okay, next up we have the Milan um, pencils. Uh, these guys are located in Spain, not Italy, if you're curious. 
I paid about 15 bucks for a set of 24. As advertised on their packaging, these pencils claim to be, number one, break resistant, uh, using what they call strong lead and a LPS, which is a lead protection system. I think they delivered on this claim. I have yet to break a lead, and these pencils sharpen cleanly. Uh, two, they claim they have an ergo grip, and I find this also to be true. The pencil barrels are three-sided and are rounded off. Think of a uh, Wankel rotary engine. They feel comfortable in the hand to work with. And the last claim is that they are very smooth. I also find this to be true. Uh, for the sake of sa saving time, for this demo, I did not include the actual drawing of the color blocks that you see, but the application from this pencil um, was indeed smooth. As you can see here, um, when the color blocks are activated with water, the resulting colors are much more vibrant than the Royal and Langnickel offerings. The three primary colors here, red, yellow, and blue, in particular, appear to be the most vibrant in the bunch, which is good, uh, since you can draw all of your other uh, colors uh, from those three primaries. Um, the paintbrush I'm using here is a Pentel Aquash. I purchased it as a set of three, and I'm using the medium-sized tipped brush, as is shown here in the middle. I'm using a water brush instead of a watercolor brush, since this is what I plan to use when sketching outdoors. It's a good brush, uh, but I can foresee where it might be a little too small for larger pictures that might need larger washes. Uh, but for uh, smaller size um, sketchings, um, it uh, seems like a good tool for the job. Uh, one final note before I draw the uh, line for the bleed test. Um, uh, something worth noting is on the pencils uh, there is no color designation. Uh, there is instead a code that you would have to look up somewhere and uh, cross-reference what that code is to a color. Um, I did not uh, check online to see if there's anything for that but uh, with the package there is nothing. So you really have no way to uh, differentiate between the, you know, the slight differences in the, in the types of colors that you're using. So that is uh, something else worth noting. I realized at this point that I had just added a little bit too much water and kind of uh, blended um, the width of that column of water going down and it kind of skewed the results of how the uh, Mylon pencils would actually bleed into that water so I kind of mixed them up together. Uh, I am planning on doing um, a follow-up to this um, where I can demonstrate this a little bit better and maybe not so much of the bleed effect into water but the bleed effect into other um, rich colors uh, but that'll probably be on another video. And finally, before moving on to the next watercolor um, set of pencils by Reeves, I just wanted to point out that the watercolor paper I'm using is by Canson. It's a 140-pound paper um, called Montval. Okay, up next are the watercolor pencils from Reeves. Reeves' name has been around since 1766, where they originated in England. They were acquired in the 20th century by another company, but they still use the Reeves name today. The set only cost me about $8 for a set of 12. There's a black, a white, the six colors that you see here, and the remaining four are a lighter blue, green, violet, and a variation of red. Each pencil only has a colored end that matches the color of the lead. There are no identifying marks. There's no names or color codes. Reeves also makes a 24 pack. The pencils are round in shape, making them easy to sharpen. The application of these pencils felt fairly smooth, and I didn't have to apply too much pressure to lay down some pigment. As you can see here, the colors activate nicely without too much of a fuss. Um, the green that came with the Reeves kit, um, I actually like that color green better than the first two offerings. Um, for trees, it looks like a more realistic choice. And you can always brighten it up with a little yellow if you wanted to get the uh, the 
a bit of lightness and warmth, I guess. But here um, is what I was trying to get with the other two. Is As you can see how the colors are just blending or actually bleeding into the water. And it gives you an idea how well these colors will mix. And for the price, I think the reeds did a pretty good job here. The box for the reeds uh, watercolors does show the color names. Um, we have white, yellow, orange, dark vermilion, red, light violet, light blue, dark blue, sap green, mid green, mid brown, and black. Moving on to the pentalics. This 12 pencil set comes in a tin, um, and these are hexagonal pencils, and they have black but no white, and they have 11 colors, ivory, light yellow, orange, cherry red, dark pink, light blue, dark blue, lavender, yellow green, emerald green, and medium brown. The barrels are the colors of the pencils, and there are no other identifications on the pencil. Uh, these are made in Taiwan, and they are packaged in China. And here we have the bleeding test on these. And as you can see, these also bleed pretty well into each other. Now uh, the table is tilted, by the way, um, a few degrees towards the bottom of the screen. Uh, so it's interesting to see certain colors run upwards. And next up we have Fantasia. I purchased a 10 pencil set for about 6 bucks. Um, these are um, manufactured in Indonesia, although the company is British. Um, the 10 pencils are round. Uh, it includes a white and a black. Um, and it also includes a, um, a graphite, but it doesn't identify whether the gray or the black is a graphite. There are no identification. Um, numbers or names on any of the pencils, just the color of the barrel, uh, which represents the color of the pencil that you're drawing with. Uh, it comes with a plastic tray, um, and here we have the bleeding test. And again, you can see how some of the colors are running up. And again, the bleeding of the uh, pigments into the thinner water is definitely apparent in this set as well. And I'll just let this run a few seconds. Um, you can see the um, water's kind of running down the page and kind of pooling into the brown area. Um, you probably can't see it at this speed, but if you speed it up, you should be able to see um, the water moving in and kind of pushing the brown aside. And I apologize for the uh, out-of-focus close-ups on that top row. Uh, the camera is definitely too close to the paper for the camera that I'm using to uh, really focus that close. I'm hoping that this bottom part will come out a little bit better. It doesn't really look that much better, actually. Okay. Up next is Derwent. <clears throat> Derwent is a British company, and their origins date back to the early 19th century. The current line of watercolor pencils include Academy, Watercolor, Color Soft, in Ink Tents, Metallic, and Graphite Tint. Uh, they can be purchased individually or in sets of 12, 24, 36, and 72. Derwents are hexagonal. When applying, I felt I had to add slightly more pressure to leave heavier pigment on the page. The pencils have both a color-coded end as well as the color's name and the color's number um, stamped onto each pencil, making them easy to identify. The story behind these particular pencils that I'm using here is I attended a Derwent Products workshop where at the end of the, of the two-hour um, presentation they handed out um, pencils to everybody. Um, there was enough for six to go around, so everybody got six pencils. Um, unfortunately, the oranges were already taken. So here what I did is I mixed uh, the Scarlet Lake 12 and the Deep Cadmium 6, um, a red and a yellow, to obtain the orange. I've since purchased a set of 36, um, probably around $40 if I recall for that set.
As you can see, I had to um, kind of coax over the colors uh, in the Derwents down to that uh, clear strip of water that I put. Um, I don't know if you can notice here, but the, the paper is actually warping and it's pooling to the left. So I had to kind of push those colors uh, over to that strip of water. Okay, now we go on to Artist's Loft. Artist Loft's pencils um, come in a package of either 12, 24, or 36. These are hexagonal pencils. Um, they do not have a color name or number on them, although the uh, pencil barrels are approximately the color of the, um, of the leads. Um, so you can uh, kind of figure out what you're working with. These are manufactured in Taiwan and uh, packaged in China. Um, and they're relatively inexpensive. This 24-pack uh, that I bought only cost me $4.99 um, at a local Michael's store. Um, surprised that um, for this amount of money, the, the quality of what I'm seeing is, is really not too bad. But of course, the uh, true test is going to be after this entire presentation dries, and we'll see what these um, colors look like. I'll be interested to see how well they do in our next test. The next set of pencils I'm going to try here are made by Caron Dash. These are Swiss-made pencils based in Geneva, Switzerland. They've been around for about 100 years. Much like the chocolate the Swiss are well known for, these pencils have a smooth and almost buttery consistency when being laid down. These are hexagonal pencils. The pencil body is the color of the lead and each pencil has both a name and a number code. They come in tins or wood box sets and the sizes vary from 12 to 120 colors. Karandash are not inexpensive pencils and they are the most expensive of the bunch being tested here. I purchased a used set of 12 for $10, which was missing a pencil. But normally a set of 12 will run closer from $25 to $30 new. These pencils can also be purchased individually, as I'm currently waiting for my brown umber 049 pencil to arrive any day now. As seen here, the richness of the pigments are causing quite a remarkable bleeding and blending effect. I only wish I had the brown color laid down at this point, but I will for the next demo. Karandash does offer several type of watercolor pencils, such as fan color and museum uh, aquarelles, uh, but these are the super color twos. Okay, time to move on to our next category of pencils. These are the Faber Castells, or Faber Castells, however you pronounce that. Faber-Castell has been around for over 200 years, and they are a product of Germany. The two watercolors I'm familiar with are the standard aquarelles and the Albrecht Durers, the latter of the two being the more expensive. The Durers offer more vibrancy, and I also believe that the, once the colors are dry, they're permanent. I'm using the Art Grip aquarelles here, Although, for this demonstration, you will notice that there's an asterisk next to the brown, which I'll explain in a bit. The Art Grips are a triangular pencil dotted with raised bumps for comfort and control. Faber-Castells come in sets from 12 to 120. Not taking my time when I ordered my set, I selected the 12-piece beginning artists set. In my head, I thought I was getting 12 pencils, what I got were eight pencils, one being black. The remaining four items were a pencil sharpener, a brush, a watercolor pad, and a uh, pencil art pad. They also include a 24-page color instruction booklet, which is actually pretty good. And it's actually a nice set, uh, but I miss having those extra colors. Which brings me back to the asterisk. The brown that is seen here is from an Albrecht Durer watercolor pencil. If you look at the results of the bleed test on the Faber-Castells, uh, the, the results look pretty weak. I'm not sure if that's uh, because the pigments dried um, before they could be um, absorbed into the water or what the story is, but uh, that bears uh, repeating the test 
So in the next video we'll we'll take care of that. Uh, up next uh, we have the Prismacolors. Prismacolor pencils are American and they are manufactured right here in the United States. The company has been around for about 75 years. Their watercolor product line are the Premier pencils and they come in sets of 12, 24, and 36. The cost for a set of 36 only runs about $25. The pencils are round and the application to the paper is smooth. The barrels are natural wood finish and each pencil contains a stamp for both the color name and the number. Unfortunately, it's my understanding that these pencils are being discontinued and that's a shame since I really like these. I do not know if the company is planning to release a new line or not, but if you've used these before, I'd recommend you buying more while you can. Of all of the sets we've tried in this um, demonstration, um, these colors appear to be the most opaque, and uh, they also appear to be the brightest colors being pulled into the, to the bleeding test um, compared to the others. So now we're going to let this dry and I'll come back with a uh, final photo to see what the, uh, the results of the dry paper look like. Okay, this is the before picture, followed by the aftermath, and followed by uh, close-ups of each of the colored pencils. I'll leave it up to you to make your own decision on what you think uh, looks best. So thanks for watching. I hope to have the uh, follow-up video for this um, soon, and I will post it as soon as it's done. Thanks for watching.